amount of PM 2.5 in Bangkok is beyond standard. Nevertheless, that's not entire story yet. There are many more particles regarding of our infamous PM 2.5 we breathe daily. Thai PBS World asked Dr. Siwat Pong Piajan, expert on PM 2.5 and air pollution. Actually, I have been doing for this research for more than 10 years. Um, go back to the period when I'm, after I was completing my PhD from Birmingham University in the UK, uh, nobody even knows what is PM 2.5. So um, um, I, I think comparing to like 10 years ago, um, the public start to pay more attention on, especially for the particulate matters. Uh, before PM10, we already know that the, 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 the standard for 24 hours is not uh, greater than 120 microgram per cubic meters. But nowadays, nobody talk about PM10 anymore. So people focusing on PM 2.5, and I will forecast for the next few years, people will not pay attention on PM 2.5 any longer, and people will start talking about PM 1.0. Because the smaller, the greater the impact it will have for the health. So we are talking about the ultrafine particles. It's not only PM 2.5, but also the nanoparticles. So, so does it mean uh, PM 2.5 is not the entire story? No, no, we should focus on the entire range of PM. So in each range of particulate matters, they do have their own roles. For example, if you are talking about the long range atmospheric transportations or transboundary pollutions, PM 10 is the most suitable one. Okay, not PM 2.5 or not PM 1.0. Matters, like in each area, such as in Chiang Mai and in Bangkok as well, does they came from the same source? Or? This question is very difficult, and that's why we have uh, what we call in terms of atmospheric chemistry, we call it the source apportionment technique, because the source is not constant at all time. Okay, for example, in Bangkok, we already know that more than seventy percent of PM two point five came from traffic emissions. Okay, that's, that's the research. And I, I found something pretty similar. But that doesn't mean that next year, or next two years, or next 10 years, this proportion will be the same. So it's not constant, okay? It depends on the wind directions. It also depends if the wind blow from other sources from all neighboring countries that they have forest fires. In that period, it, had, it could be a trans boundary pollution. And then traffic emissions will, will, may not be the single source for the PM 2.5. So it depends, it's like case by case. And air pollution is something very dynamic. For example, in Chiang Mai, uh, for the burning season, start from January to March and, and at the beginning of April, uh, based on my studies, what I have found is traffic emissions still play an important role. In, in controlling the PM 2.5 level, especially for the carcinogenic substances, we call it polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAH. So, like, how should we manage the pollution? Because the, the perception and awareness of the people in Thai, we didn't know that uh, it's, it's quite dangerous for our health. Yes, um, I think I think people should really know we have the right to breathe the clean air, okay? This is the, the basic right for every single human being on this planet, that we should have a right to breathe clean air, okay? That's the first thing, and we should have also the right to know what exactly including inside the PM. Not only the PM 2.5, but also the PM 10 and all the also the total suspended particle matters. Um, to end in this interview, uh, do you think will there be a clean air back in Thailand soon? Or? It depends on the momentum of social movement. It also depends on the awareness of Thai citizens, whether or not they really recognize that they have the right to breathe the clean air. This is the point. 
and they should have the right to know what exactly involved inside the PM 2.5 and all the type of PM. That will be the key to drive this movement to, to have the Clean Air Act in Thailand. Well, who knows? Well, we have to see. Yes. My pleasure. PM 2.5 is not the entire story of the particle matter issue. People deserve cleaner surroundings and non-pollution air because it's their right to breathe clean air.